still work? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, we're good, we're starting. And we're up there. Okay, well, hi, uh, my name is Danielle, and uh, this is Darius, and uh, I'm up here because I really love poetry. And I know this is a conference for people who love coding, and I'm into that too, don't get me wrong, but let's focus on poetry. Darius and I are doing this together because we both separately wrote some programs uh, where we either found or created poetry. Uh, and we figured we told you about that because we did some fairly similar things along the way. Um, I don't remember who said things. Uh, I guess I'm supposed to do this one too. Um, so we did this stuff with accidental poetry, which is poetry that's either detected in or generated from existing text. Uh, my project was called Nantucket, and I look for accidental limericks in books. So you look at a bunch of consecutive words, and you look at the rhyming and the syllable count, and you see if it just happens to be a limerick. Whereas uh, Darius did a bunch of really cool markup chain stuff where he created poetry, which is uh, ultimately much better. <laughs> so, language is weird, but that's okay because you have data and common sense. You really never coach it, but the fishing tools get far, and it's a pretty common sense tweaking, gets you more and more interesting results. You don't need fancy theory, so that's lovely too. Uh, so this is an example of uh, one of the accidental lyrics that I found. This is in Keller and Keller's own biography, the story of my life, uh, where she just happened to write, a uh, British oak with rooted grass purse, slender a handful holds together, with cliffs of white and bowers of green and ocean narrowing to caress her. This is from a mark out glad of a 19th century cookbook. Uh, Peel a pint of time sweeten and dip, reach a spoonful of boiling point zip, the quote, with tend to make, creates a minus brown taste, the extract for the not teach and whip. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both started with a plan like this. Take the CMU pronouncing dictionary, and look where it's up when it, and Chucky got some model of meter and rhyme. And so here's the uh, dictionary. You've got a file pro pronunciation, one per line, and here are two of the lines. Um, pronunciation to the same word, which is on the left. On the right are the ways to say it, two different lists of phonemes, what they call the alphabet. Address and address. You can see that the vowel sounds each end in zero, one, or two for the amount of stress to give it. Now, a little confusingly, they're out of order, but zero means no stress. So again, address, address. And um, if we string these pronunciations together, we've got a first cut at pronouncing the whole poem. If you say it naturally, it goes like, reclaimers, bear that tree. With the CMU deck count, we get like reclaim or spare that tree. Okay, at the start. So we also have to deal with a lot of words that aren't in the CMU dictionary. Uh, so you have some choices. How do you deal with that? So you can ignore those words and only pay attention to words that you can find in the dictionary, which is kind of boring. You miss out on a lot. You can do a bunch of really complicated NLP stuff, and that sounds fun, but sometimes you just want to play. Or you can come up with really hacky ways to uh, mess around with guessing pronunciation, uh, and you can guess what each of us did. <laughs> so I played around a lot with finding rhyming in words that aren't in the CMU dictionary. Uh, and my theory was that even if a word isn't in the dictionary, maybe the last syllable of that word is in other words that are in the dictionary. So I actually built uh, my own pronunciation dictionary that was just last syllables of words. So I had to find the last syllable worth of characters in a string, and uh, I'm about to show you a regex, and it's horrible because I wrote it a few years ago, and this project was my first Python, and my first NLP, and one of my first programs ever, and I was trying to learn a lot in Go, so I apologize. But, I wrote this crazy regular expression, which is, <laughs> I swear I have updated in my first uh, But anyway, the basic idea is I'm looking for one or two consonants, followed by any number of vowels, followed optionally by, you know, some, uh, con some consonants, maybe an E or an ED, because those usually don't add syllables, the end of a word, Okay, let's move on and never look at that again. <laughs> and uh, use the CMU dictionary, I can find the last syllable worth of phonemes, so units of sounds to correspond to that last word, syllable worth of letters. And that's a lot easier, because all I have to do is look for the last vowel sounds in anything that comes after. We know what's a vowel sound because it ends in a digit for stress, as Darius was saying. So I find the last uh, phoneme in this array that has a digit at the end. Anything after that, great. I can now correspond to the string worth of uh, last syllable letters and less syllable worth of set of phonemes and build up that dictionary. So that let me find uh, limericks like this from the ink settings world by some guy whose last name I'm not going to manage to pronounce. The chrysalis or pupa, the perfect insect orthoptera, hymenoptera, pisanoptera, neuroptera, coleoptera. <laughs> And also, just one more for the King James Bible. The uh, Amorites and the Gergesites, and the Hivites and the Archites, and the Sinite and the Arvidite and the Zemrites and the Hamanite. <laughs> so Darius also uh, played around with the King James Bible. Received him to the Lord one, of Nathan the sons has been done, 
the word of the Lord which stood by the sword that day of the book of Isaiah. <laughs> Uh, so technically speaking, rhyming depends on more than just the pronunciation of the last syllable of each word. You're supposed to pay attention to the last stress syllable and, uh, you know, maybe not use repeating words, but I figured that if I limited myself too much, uh, I wasn't going to get uh, as much fun. So uh, that's why I get these really bad rhymes, but I get really cool limericks like this one from Dracula. Grinding of our teeth remembering, whence and how it came from loving, kindness against our grim hate pretender, faith against all our fears and doubting. So. Okay, meter and verse means a regular pattern of beats. And here we mark the on and off beats, reclaimer, fair, that tree. The pattern is not there out in the CMU deck, but we do get the right number of syllables by counting the vowel sounds, so that's a start. And some of these ones and zeros on vowel sounds correspond to on and off beats, one per on, zero per off. But some of the ones are on off beats. We could get this word to pass by saying a one can match an off beat if it's the only syllable in this word. Um, but that's too permissive. It would say that this is perfect iambic pentameter. I uh, am sought him, it is known to say James, and most of the output passing with both would sound almost that bad. Ultimately, we want fancy machine learning, and honestly, that course would have been made more sense than my little pile of hacks. But there's an addictive quality to tweaking the code to get a little less stupid and seeing what comes out. The next hack was to just ban the list of stop words from appearing at an on beat. Lord of the Rings. I see the course of deeds now, said Sam Isle. Get there and elsewhere other powers still. Dwell here to mark the end that they wrote in file. Behind and deal with that a line. By Bill, cried Gandalf. Time to unfold. <laughs> and I said, a second time, I must go round ahead. So the another thing we both had to deal with was counting syllables. Again, it's super easy for words in the CMU dictionary because a syllable, uh, it, all you have to do is count the number of vowel sounds. Vowel sounds end to integers, count the number of phonemes that end to integers, I get the number of vowel sounds. Great, there are four syllables in concatenate names. But what about words that are not in CMU dict? Well, my need solution is I just want to count the number of vowels, but that won't work out for words like room and board, where you have multiple vowels uh, that are creating a single vowel sound. Okay, well, we can try counting the number of contiguous groupings of vowels. I mean, this is all stuff that Darius and I actually both did coincidentally. But this causes problems with words like uglier and contiguous, where you have these groupings of vowels that have multiple vowel sounds. So what do you do? Well, we get the, we count up the number of contiguous groupings of vowel sounds, and uh, then we decrement it for each digraph we found, where a digraph is a pair of vowels that usually form a single vowel sound. This is a little fuzzy. It's going to screw it up sometimes, but eh, it's good enough that going to work. So there are other few things that we must around with, like, you know, I-O-U-S is uh, usually one vowel sound, or maybe even apostrophe, that adds a vowel sound. So there are a few other ways you, you mess around and other heuristics we put in. This is a really short talk. Um, so ignoring all of various restrictions and really giving ourselves permission to have bad rhymes, bad meter, something that's close enough, uh, let us get a lot more interesting stuff, especially for me looking for accidental verse, uh, where I have a very limited resource. Uh, I didn't bother to reject rhymes that used exactly the same words, so I ended up getting uh, stuff like this one from the Count of Monte Cristo. Are now in France and are free, free to do what asked the young girl, free to leave me, leave you, why should I leave you? That's not for me to say, but me. <laughs> And I also didn't require that uh, I have an A-A-B-B-A -A -B -B -A, uh, rhyme screen there. I really was okay with every single line rhyme, which is a terrible, terrible limerick. But it let me get stuff like this from the Just So stories. The hump that is black and blue, we climb out of bed with a frusly, head in a snarly, early voice, we shiver and scowl and we grunt and we. Hmm. <laughs> and I'm really okay with anything that lets me say frusly in front of all of you. <laughs> and uh, one less fabulous one from Darius. A brute vision he had of swirling cloud, and in the midst of it, towers and battlements, tall as hills, founded upon a mighty mountain throne, above immeasurable pits, great courts, and dungeons as his prison's shield cliffs, and gaping gates of steel and adamant, and then all passed. And so did our talk. Thank you. Thank you.